thank you for organizing, for organizers to inv for inviting me to this uh, nice event. And uh, I'm really honored to give a talk here, especially to be the closing to talk uh, today. Uh, bec because I, as many of you know, I knew, I know Pierce for, I'm afraid to say 30 years, which is half of our lives. And we first met with him in Belize, Georgia. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the photographs from this uh, time long ago. And then we met a few times after that here at ICTP. And then, of course, overlapped for more than 25 years at Rutgers. Uh, so, yes, so Pierce has many wonderful features. One of them is that he's always excited about something. So much excited that you always think that there are more than two pierces around you if you excite him. So you feel that you are all surrounded by him. So today, uh, unfortunately, I didn't work for, I didn't work in strongly correlated uh, systems for some years. So today, Pierce will pay for his past sins that he was interested many years ago together with me in finite zero point entropy at, uh, 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 that is uh, at zero uh, entropy at zero temperature. And today what I'm going to talk about is uh, what happens to this question uh, at, uh, due to quantum dynamics. Uh, so I will talk about a very simple model. And uh, most of my talk, or well, significant, significant part of my talk will be explaining why this model is interesting. <laughs> because uh, the model seems to be extremely artificial. What is a model? The model is known for ages in glass community. It contains completely random classical part. Completely random means that you have a number of spins, uh, n spins, and the energy is, not, is completely random function of a spin configuration. That is, you flip just one spin and you go so and the energy changes completely, no correlations whatsoever. So this classical, energy, classical spin glass model was introduced uh, many years ago by Derrida and who surprisingly showed that, uh, surprisingly to the community, he showed that in this model one can observe uh, some phase transitions which are reminiscent of the transitions in classical glasses. The, a uh, phase transition in this model is due to a very simple fact that if we take the partition function of this model, it is, uh, or if you write it uh, sort of formally like that, this is uh, energy, which is uh, the classical energy uh, distributed as a Gaussian, and then there is a um, usual, usual Boltzmann factor. Then you minimize it and you find that it's dominated by the energy, which is, of course, I lost the sign, minus here, uh, an energy which is proportional to n. But, and so it seems that there is nothing interesting happens, but then you realize that in this model, in fact, it could be that this energy exceeds the energy for which we have any states at all. Because look, uh, number of different configurations in this model is two to n. So if you multiply by this probability, at some energy, you do not find any states at all. So either this partition function is dominated by some, uh, by the energies at which there are many states, many in thermodynamic limit, or they dominated by the energy at which there are no states. And there is a transition between these two regimes. That's a classical glass transition, which will be quite relevant for my discussion. So now we are interested in a quantum model in which to make it quantum, we simply add to this a small term which, is, which flips the spins, uh, so that is sigma x. Uh, okay, so, uh, not like, so, how do I see that I see? Okay, uh, like this. Uh, so, before we uh, add, uh, before I discuss more quantum model, let's discuss the classical dynamics what, uh, of this uh, simplest model. Classical dynamics, you can think about some sort of Monte Carlo procedure in which you flip the spins with the probability which is given by the, by the Boltzmann factor. So in this case, 
you can ask how long it takes me to explore the space. There is no structure in this space whatsoever, so it takes naturally two to n steps because you don't know where you go. At each step, well, you find better or worse, but unless you, until you explore everything, you do not know where you are. So, uh, as I said before, this is a big advantage from the point of view of solution, but also is a disadvantage because the model is quite unphysical. So now I would like to argue that this unphysical model, from the viewpoint of normal physical system, is in fact is quite, inter quite relevant to some non-physical applications. Uh, the application which I, which the parallel, it's not exactly, but it's very similar to the system which is well known in mathematical community, which is known as number partitioning problem. Not to confuse with partition functions that I was talking about, they have nothing to do to, uh, whatsoever. Uh, so, the problem is like that. Suppose you are given a set of numbers, A1, A2, A, A n. And uh, the numbers are known with very high accuracy. There are some mathematical works which tell you with what accuracy you need to know these numbers for, the, for this to work. And what you want to know is to minimize this strange energy, which is this strange energy, which is the absolute value of the sum of some numbers minus the sum of other numbers. You can also say that, look, I just distribute in the optimal way, plus and minuses in the sum of all numbers, so to minimize this quantity. If you are a physicist, then you say that you can also, the problem is equivalent to minimizing this sort of antiferromagnetic like Hamiltonian, in which you have A as a, the given numbers and sigma, which are these uh, plus minus Ising variables. So, what is a, a common property? of this and random energy model. If you just change, if you flip one spin in this problem, that is you change one sign to, from plus to minus, immediately you go very, very far in energy, in this energy. The reason is qualitatively obvious because you are sort of adjusted this sum to get the value which is much, much smaller than the typical value in your, of your energy. And just uh, if you just now flip one sign, you immediately go very far. So in this respect, this is also, uh, this is problem is very similar to random energy model, and uh, what I'm going to say most likely applies to it as well. So, uh, so that is just one example of the uh, sort of uh, mathematical problems which are, uh, which do not have any structured phase space, unlike the normal glasses. Okay. So now, what we, I will discuss how fast this model relaxes and so on uh, in the main part of my talk. But before you have, I want to give you a very important reference point. How fa what is the fastest relaxation that can happen in such a problem? So in very general terms, we're talking about completely unstructured search. Sorry, we are talking about quantum search in unstructured space. If in unstructured space, uh, the search can happen with, uh, with the, we can use Grover algorithm, and it was shown by mathematicians that this is the best that one can do. What is this algorithm? The algorithm is, is works, the important thing is that algorithm works in the square root of the number of classical steps. That is, if you have a space like this, which has two to n elements, classically you just have to check, to check all two to n elements. Quantum algorithm takes a square root of it that is two to the power of n over two. And the basic idea of it is that you create these two very special operators. One is, uh, one is uh, done from this unknown state, another is done from the uh, just a superposition of the all states that you have in your problem, and then you rotate your system basically in this two-dimensional space. It's very important that this algorithm, well, the whole idea of this algorithm, if you look closely at it, is due to the fact that you, you limit your problem to rotation in this artificial two-dimensional space. You reduce the phase space of the problem to only these two. And then you can go slowly. And once you realize it, you realize that what mathematicians 
are working on this field, uh, were struggling with for a long time, that this algorithm is extremely sensitive to disorder in the sense that you, you nearly need to have to keep the phases of all components exactly equal. Otherwise, instead of this two-dimensional rotation, it starts to deviate and goes God knows where. I did a little simulation just for the sake of this talk in which I green indicates the, how the uh, algorithm works in a perfect system. And in black, I introduce some perturbation. And you see that it never reaches the ideal state. Okay, so in our problem, which I'm going, which is a random energy model, which can be thought as a search in this unstructured space, we also expect, because it's not fine-tuned in any way, that we cannot get very close to Grover. And we should get better, we should, we might be able to get better than classical, but never Grover. Uh, so, okay, okay, I can skip this for the sake of time. And now I will, uh, uh, I will talk about uh, the actual properties. So, uh, first of all, let's do some na fi naive, uh, simple physical discussion, what we have. I will be talking exclusively about the regime of relatively small fields in x direction, uh, in which, I, because what I really want that the field in x direction do not c completely destroy the states that I have classically. And, uh, so then, what, what, what are the states that I have in this problem? If I forget about my classical disorder, then clearly I have the states which are characterized by the magnetization in x direction. And the magnetization runs from minus n to n, so here are these states. Uh, so now on the top of it, I have the, uh, uh, the classic, the states in z direction, the states corresponding to the potential in z direction, which are also Gaussian, but broader. Now, uh, so this, all the, each of these states in the x direction are highly degenerate because, of course, if I fix magnetization in x direction, there are many ways how I get this magnetization, provided this, that this magnetization is not maximal. Uh, so, so lowest energy is of, lowest energy level is of course non-degenerate, and but all others are extremely degenerate. So, as shown here, in the regime of ga small gamma, gamma less than one, my lowest energy polarized state is higher than the lowest energy classical state. So, clearly, if I am somewhere here, with energy somewhere here, I, my classical states are not affected much by the quantum processes, simply in order, because in order to move from one classical state to another, I need to use this uh, the states in, a, in another sector, and they are separated by the gap. So, uh, also, it's clear that uh, uh, there are, depending on gamma, there are two regimes. As I said, I will be interested in the regime when gamma is smaller than this square root of log 2, which is shown here. But in principle, there is also another regime where gamma is large, and depending on what is larger, the lowest energy state that is zero, let's say zero energy state, is dominated by one or another, by uh, polarized state or classical state. This strange uh, picture that you have either dominance by polarized states or classical states result in this phase diagram, which is known for good, for 30, not, but maybe for 25 years, that, uh, with, uh, that people say that, look, at zero, t at uh, small gamma, we know that we have this classical Derrida glass, and we have a transition from classical paramagnet to classical glass, whereas at slow temperatures, uh, we have a transition as a function of gamma, as I explained you, whether we are dominated by classical states or polarized states. So, and that was, uh, sort of the whole story for many years. What I'm going to, t uh, to tell you now is uh, that this picture is almost correct, but not correct, but not fully correct, because it is, even though it is correct that uh, the pot that Z potential has very little effect on the polarized states uh, at, at, at low energies. However, at higher temperatures or high energies, completely different uh, thing happens, namely that you have dyn two dynamical glass phases. And here I actually want to explain what are these two different dynamical glass phases. There is, of course, with this boring thermodynamic glass, which is not very interesting, where you have, where I just dominate by a single 
state. But then here, you are dominated by many states in the thermodynamics. However, if you ask what is dynamical properties, you see come full quantum localization. That is, if you start from one in one state, you remain there forever. And this, uh, this is known as many-body localization, of course. However, there is another phase transition here above which you are, you are still in a glass state in the sense that your entropy is still very low uh, compared to what it should be, uh, dynamical entropy, but uh, you are not dominated by, single, by one state. So here you have delocalization, but uh, you are still in a glass. And only finally at very, very high temperatures, which are beyond this plot, you go to fully ergodic state. So, uh, and that is the main message of my talk, that here we have completely different regimes, and, and the entropy is very dynamical entropy, that is the, f the space, the, uh, the phase volume that we cover by natural dynamics is completely different. Okay, so uh, to explain uh, very briefly how, why it's so, uh, let's focus on some and low energy states. And we'll see that there are two different regimes. So uh, the number of these states is simply given by the density. And then uh, uh, we can ask how many states we get if we flip a given number of, st of spins in a, starting from one state. We get this number of states. We give, we get this number of, of uh, new states. and. Uh, you see that this function has a sharp maximum at d equal n over 2. What does it mean? That the number of states where we can go if we start in perturbation theory to go step by step from our beloved state that we started with uh, grows uh, very fast, more than exponentially. And that is the result. Well, it, it's Gaussian, actually. So as, that's, as a result, all quantum processes, even though the quantum tunneling amplitude typically decreases exponentially with distance, here uh, it's, uh, we are always dominated by largest distances because the number of states increases with distance very fast. So uh, that's a qualitative reason why we are always jumping very far. Now I, I imagine that you believe me, and of course I will need to prove it more uh, more formally, you imagine that you believe me that it's true, that we are always dominated by large distances. Then in this problem is reduced to a very known, very well known problem in uh, localization theory, which is called Rosenzweig Porter model, that was and uh, that was studied in a number of works, but most important for me, for me will be the recent work by uh, Valodya Kravtsov here. And this model is is a sort of simplest model for localization in a high dimensional space. What do we have in this model? We have energy, random energy, and we have random hopping amplitudes, and the hopping amplitudes scale as non-trivial power of the system size. So, uh, in our, in this, mo uh, of course, in our problem, we need really uh, to find what is this a scaling, how this scaling exponent gamma is related to the parameters of our problem. And that is uh, a subject of some calculation. But what is important is that this is just a number, which is a function of our parameters. Now, if you, uh, uh, if you just take this scaling uh, and then use it to get the physical properties, you immediately see what happens. That in the... Uh, uh, Rosenzweig Porter model, there, are, uh, there is a large intermediate phase in which the states are not localized because the sum of the matrix elements of the Hamiltonian is uh, less than, uh, uh, is more than, uh, the sum of the matrix elements diverges, but the sum of the squares is finite and therefore it has no non it has, it doesn't have ergodic uh, behavior. So let me explain you these two uh, these two properties. First of all, why this, uh, why this requirement for localization? It's very simple. Because if you have, if this is infinity, it means that you can always find another state in resonance with yours. If this is infinite as well, then you can always, you can, um, 
you can find uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, then the total scattering rate in your problem, uh, sorry, the total decay rate is finite. It means that you go away very quickly. So uh, in the intermediate regime, if you put the definitions, you find that this sum, which appears here, is uh, given by these equations, and therefore in this intermediate regime, when gamma is, sorry, uh, what is this? Uh, when gamma is less than, more than one, but less than two, we have extended but non-ergodic states. Uh, so now, uh, so what do we have there? So as a function of energy, our gamma, which is this parameter, uh, increases naturally because simply gamma, you remember, contains this number which is the simply, the, uh, which comes from the fact that the number of states increases in our system. So it increases when we go to small energies. And therefore, uh, uh, sorry, when it increases, when we go to high energies, and it decreases and goes to gamma to, to one at low energies. So naturally, it, cross, it crosses these two critical points, one and two. There is no way how it can avoid it. Exactly where it crosses depends on this factor, but as I said, this factor is not crucial. So now, so we have the four in our system. And we have, two regime, we have two regimes. One is this fully localized regime that I was talking about, in which there is no life at all. We have intermediate regime in which the system relaxes, but slowly. It goes, you know, there are all, we can find some resonances uh, we, to, into, to which you go, but uh, it takes a lot of time. As a result, if you ask now, what is the physical correlator of my problem? After all, I started saying that I'm, st I'm studying the spin glass, uh, something like a glass. The spin correlators are very funny. They decrease uh, exponentially, but the rate at which they decrease is anomalous power of the system size. And they do not decrease fully, but there is a bit of leftover here. And this leftover itself scales as a non-trivial non power of the system size. All that shows that in this system, there is a wide non-ergodic phase in which, of course, in one naturally would associate with a quantum glass behavior. So, uh, and in this respect, here I compare these uh, correlators with a correlate which were computed by direct numerics uh, with the compute correlators in the Rosenzweig-Porter model uh, in Kurtzhoff paper, and you see that they are completely similar. Well, and actually, they can be mapped one to one exactly. So this mapping to rosenzweig porter model is probably correct, is also almost certainly correct. So uh, now the last thing that I might want to discuss is uh, how to compute this matrix element that I told you uh, that we need some of this parameter alpha, but uh, it's just as computation, and I should say that I computed simply by computing the green function of this problem in the uh, in time, and then taking the Fourier trans and uh, then I can show that uh, this can com by Fourier transform in time I can get it in energy. So uh, it's all quite simple. There is a non-trivial issue here, which is the effect of the cross terms, in which uh, that is effect of. Z uh, interaction in z-channel on the interaction on x-channel and backwards, which is not clear to us at, at the moment. And so uh, we did some, a lot of numerics to check how, uh, the, how with what is the accuracy of this, uh, of this formula for alpha that we derived analytically here. Uh, so, uh, but even though it's very likely that we are, that this formula is incorrect by, incorrect by 10 or 20 percent. It doesn't change the whole qualitative picture that I described before, namely, which is summarized on this slide, that we have, instead of very, uh, we have this interesting dynamical glass phases in which there is, especially in this phase, there is some life, there is non-zero entropy, but a lot of entropy is hidden in the, mm, uh, because the system does not dynamically cover all the phase space. Okay, so I think that that's my time, right?